Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. The third step would be color composition and for this I would like to refer back to a tutorial created by Simona Ceccarelli. She has an amazing explanation on how to create color palettes and do color composition. So feel free to check that one out in the description below. And then after you figure out what colors you want to use, you can start the flat color layers. For the amount of layers that you are using, I can't really give you um, a straight answer. It is something that you have to figure out for yourself. The basic rule that I apply for creating my flat color layers are working from back to front. So the background has one color and then I figure out what is next in line. So for instance, the gift is behind the bear, meaning that the layer that I have the gift color on will be behind the color of the bear. This is the basic, of course, it's like you are painting on a canvas, you always start from what is behind and work towards the front. I try to um, work the same way digitally, but of course you have multiple layers that you can now work on uh, simultaneously. For the image of the bear, I started out creating one layer for the entire bear itself while I probably should have created an extra layer for the left ear since that is sort of behind his head. Throughout the entire process I didn't experience a problem with the ear but if it was I probably would have created the extra layer. Again it is something that is personal preference and that you have to figure out for yourself. I'm not gonna um, tell you how many layers to create. So play around with it, see what works for you, and then you can get on to the next step. For the flat colors, I am using the pen tool because it gives me a sharp edge and a completely opaque color. I am going really slowly behind the line art layer, making sure I don't go past the line art itself. Once I have the entire outline, I can use the bucket tool to fill in the entire area. Because this is a long process, I am going to speed up this video until the next step. Another thing I do for every uh, flat color layer is blur out the edges. Um, I did this in this image but you can't really see the final result of this so I'm just gonna explain to you how I did this. On every layer I will use the blur tool which is the water drop tool that you can see on the left side and I make sure that the size is really big and I just go over all the edges of that flat layer. This will make sure that you don't have any harsh edges from one color to another, making it sort of fade into each other a little nicer. The reason why I am doing this is because the line art itself is not um, a flat color. As you can see it has some texture and you can see through it. If the flat layers would have a harsh line, you would actually see that harsh line through the line art. If your style has a solid line, then you probably don't need to do this. Again, this is personal preference. You can play with it as much as you like.
part is the shading. And by shading, I do mean putting in the shades and the highlights as well. To make it easier on myself, I have grouped all my uh, flat layers and I am duplicating these just to make sure that I have a backup in case I make a mistake during the shading process or if I um, edit something in a way that I don't like. I can always go back to my original flat layers and duplicate these again. The reason why I am doing this is because I am going to shade directly onto the flat layer. So there is not going to be a separate layer um, that I will be using to put the shading on. This is because of the locked transparency. When you are on a flat layer, you can lock the transparency and start shading the edges. This means that you will only see the color appear on the flat layer and only in the area that actually has color in it. So for instance, I'm starting with the bear. So here you can see that if I do not have the locked transparency on, I will be drawing outside of the flat layer. And then if you put the lock transparency on, it will only appear on the flat layer itself and not on the outside. For a Sketchbook Pro, the software that I'm currently using, I find that this gives the most pleasing results. I have also tried selecting the flat layer and then creating a new layer to do the shading on top but it gives me hard edges because, I don't know, the selection itself doesn't really pay much attention to the soft gradient that I've created with the blur tool. So I find this the most pleasing to the eye and easiest to use method in this piece of software. And yes, for the shading, I am using the custom texture brush that I created. The colors that I am using for my shading and the highlight are of course the colors that I found during my color composition stage. While I am working on a piece, I always assess the process and I found that after I did the first layer of shading and highlights, I didn't really like the depth. So I decided to create a second shading and highlight color and try out those. For the highlights, you can see that I am using several colors to try out on my color composition. First I'm using a pink, then a bright yellow and then more an orangey tone. The reason why I'm doing this is because I am thinking of the light source and the color that the light source has. If you look at real life, the color of your light will affect the colors differently and that is sort of what I'm trying to mimic here and figure out what suits me best. Um, I end up going with the orange color because I like the 
result it has on my flat colors the best. Another reason why I really like the color composition and the way it is used here is because of the locked transparency. I have seen a lot of tutorials where you create the shading on a separate layer, as I've said before, um, and then you can change the layer mode of that shading layer or that highlight layer. The problem with the lock transparency technique is that you can't really do that because your base layer, your flat color, is also going to be affected if you change the layer mode. So doing the color composition this way gives you the ability to use the color on a normal layer. So you're actually painting digitally as if you were painting on a real canvas. If you are painting on a real canvas, you don't have the luxury to um, use layer modes. You will actually have to mix your color on a palette and put it on your brush and put it on your canvas. And this is sort of the exact same way, but then digitally. After I have picked my highlight color, I am going to go through the entire shading process again. And I will speed this up for you because otherwise this video is going to be very, very long. At several moments during this process, you will also see me experiment with coloring the line art, but I didn't like the effect of it, so in the end I am going with a darker outline. I created a new highlight color I eventually decided to create a darker shadow color as well as I've said before the shading takes up a really long time so I am going to speed this up and cut out the not so interesting parts and then I will be back at the end of this video That concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I also want to refer back to the description in case you want information on um, the software that I'm using or the color composition tutorial. And in case you want to come back and revisit some of the steps, I will leave timestamps in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time!